What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to recreate this beautiful pricing table here using only free tools, including the free Cadence theme and the free Cadence Blocks plugin, which is a Gutenberg extension plugin. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jake from startblogging101.com. Let's get right into it. So a few quick things to note before we start. I just wanna show that I'm using the free Cadence theme here. I just installed it from the WordPress repo. And then if I go to plugins here, all I have is the Cadence Blocks plugin. It's the free version. And you can just get that in the WordPress repo as well by just searching for it in the plugins. And then also, as I go to the Cadence theme customizer here, I wanna point out one thing real quick. So if I go to general and then typography, I do wanna mention that I'm using the system default fonts. And this is just the system fonts. And this is what I use personally on my blog and all my niche affiliate blogs because this doesn't require loading any additional Google fonts. And it's actually the fastest way that you can have fonts on your website and will greatly speed up the performance of your website. And so I'm just using the system default font here that is just the top option in the Cadence theme. And if I open up the font weights here, it actually opens up the possibility to have all these font weights anywhere from 100 to 900 from thin to ultra bold and along with the italic versions of them. And what's super nice is I can use any of these when designing anything within Cadence Blocks. Whereas if I used Google Fonts for this, I would need to have a separate font file for every single one of these versions that I wanted. And so if I wanted four different font weights and I wanted italics for certain ones, I might have anywhere from four to six font files on my website, which can really, really slow it down. And so I did just wanna mention quick that I am using the system default fonts. And I would suggest looking into using system fonts as well if you care about the performance of your website. So this pricing table here, I actually got it from a new product called Conversion.ai. I love the way that this pricing table looks. And Conversion AI is a tool that uses the power of artificial intelligence and a friendly robot named Jarvis to write content for you. And so I've actually been using this on my blog recently to help start a lot of my blog posts and other things, including intro paragraphs or blog post outlines or a number of things. So I definitely suggest looking into that. But I loved the way that this pricing table looked and so I wanted to just recreate it in Cadence Blocks and show you how easy it is. I will have some slight variations on this pricing table and I'm actually not going to include this top piece here because that would take a little bit of custom CSS and I wanna show you how to cre recreate this without adding any additional CSS code at all. So let's jump into a test post of mine here and let's get started. This is gonna be a very casual conversation. I'm just going to go through my thought process as I run throughout side by side of the pricing table and then rebuilding it within Cadence Blocks. I'm gonna to try to talk out my thought process and show you guys exactly what I'm doing and hopefully explain some things and maybe some tips and tricks and little shortcuts that you can use when you're developing in Cadence Blocks. And I think once you see this, you'll be able to just have a better understanding of Cadence Blocks and just how to build layouts in general because there are a number of concepts involved in building this pricing table that can be applied to basically any design on your website. And so I'd love to just run through some of this, tell you a little bit about how I go about it, and hopefully it'll help you to build better sites faster with Gutenberg and Cadence Blocks. So the very first thing I know I'm gonna need is a row layout. And one thing that I like to do is just do a forward slash and then type row here. And you can see row layout shows here. And this is your container block and cadence blocks. And I'm just gonna choose two equal columns here. And I'm actually, yeah, let's, let's build the left side first here. I'm gonna build this piece right here with a dark background and then we can go about and recreate it and duplicate it here and create this piece here on the right. So the very first thing is I'm gonna be referencing down here in the lower left. You can see it says document and role layout. You can also click here and see where you're currently at. So you can see I'm currently on the row layout and there's actually two sections in here. And so you can actually just click on this section here and that's going to highlight this block here or you can just click on this directly and you can see that it shows section down here. But the very first thing is we're gonna just add a background color to the section itself and so once we click on the section here, on the right hand side, make sure you're on this cog wheel up here, the settings. 
And you can see we're on the section block itself and we're gonna choose a background color. And I'm going to link this all to a global color palette and I would suggest you doing this in the Cadence theme as well. This is one of the nicest things about the Cadence theme is it comes with a global color palette and then if you were to ever change your global colors or if you were to export this out and put it in on another website using global colors, then it would automatically link to their global colors and change all the colors without needing you to manually go in and change all the different colors to your own. And so this is super nice. And if you need help setting up your Cadence theme global color palette, I have a specific blog post that goes into great detail explaining how to set up your global color palette in Cadence from scratch and build your own color palette to match your brand and design. And so I would definitely suggest checking that out if you don't have your global color palette set. But this is already all set up and so hopefully this should just match roughly what yours is and we'll just go along with it. So for the background color of this section here, I'm just gonna choose this gray here. Now that the background color of the section is gray, I'm going to scroll down here and actually go to text color settings. And if I open this up here, I'm gonna make the text color white using my global color palette and then link colors if we were to use any. I don't know that we will, but I'm gonna choose my first accent color for the link color and my second accent color for the link color hover. And then that way the paragraphs and the text and things that I create in this section are automatically going to inherit these colors and I won't have to later set those. And so that's really nice to just do that on the section itself. And so looking back here, the first thing I'm gonna recreate is this starter title here, and I'm gonna use an advanced heading block for that. So if I just add a block here, I have advanced heading here, or you can search for it. And we're on the advanced heading. I'm going to come in and I'm going to align it center. And one other thing is you can change this to any heading type, including a paragraph. And I'm actually gonna change this to a paragraph. And I use this pretty often because I don't want any of these titles to affect my table of contents on my blog posts and I don't want them to affect SEO. Now you might want to depending on what the titles are, but for just saying starter and pro, I don't need that to be a heading itself. So I'm gonna choose paragraph here. And then we're gonna go into typography settings right here. And I like to use M's for size and let's just go with around 1.8 here and that will blow it up some. And let's type starter here. And then I'm going to highlight it here and we're gonna open the weight here. And this, going back to the system font settings that I talked about, since I have the default system fonts on here, I have access to all of these different font weights for free to me and using all of them is not going to use any extra calls at all because it's not even calling Google fonts. It's just using the default font of the device that's accessing it at the time. And so this is really nice because I can come in here and I have all sorts of font weights available to me. So I'm just going to make this the regular bold here and we'll just leave it at that. And the next thing is I'm going to be previewing my page a lot. And so if you go to preview here and preview in a new tab, with Gutenberg, the spacing that you see in the editor is pretty funky sometimes. It adds extra space to better show you how certain blocks are laid out and stuff, but that doesn't always reflect what is actually shown on the front end when you go to actually view it. So when you're building anything in Cadence Blocks or Gutenberg in general, I would always, always suggest you going into the preview itself and seeing how it actually looks because how it looks here, you can even see right now it has this extra space here so that I can add another block if I want but really that block's not there yet. And so it only has this showing right now. And so I just want you to get in the habit of constantly previewing your design on the front end so that you can actually see what it's gonna look like when you publish it. So now that we have the starter title here, I made it a little bigger. I like it a little bigger than they have it. We're gonna do this $29 a month thing here and I'm also gonna use an advanced heading for that. One thing if you're on this block here, you can use keyboard shortcuts to insert after So I'm on Windows right now, it's Control-Alt-Y, but on Mac that will be similar, but just using Command. And I'm just gonna use that here, and we're gonna do a forward slash and type advanced heading here. And so I'm gonna have another advanced heading. This is going to be centered. I'm gonna change the H2 to a paragraph again. And then I'm gonna open up the typography settings. Choose M, I'm gonna do a size of about 1.6 here. And let's just type out 29 slash MO. So that's $29 a month. And so 
One thing that's really nice about the advanced heading block and cadence blocks is you can take a piece of the advanced heading and make it look different than the rest of the heading. And so for this 29 here, you can see that the 29 is, it's more bold and it just looks different than the actual text itself. And so we're gonna do something similar with that. And so let me come back here. I'm gonna highlight the 29 here and open this up and you can choose highlight. And as soon as you do that, when you're in the, advanced heading settings over here, there's highlight settings here. And so I'm gonna open this up and we can actually change the highlight color. And so I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna choose my first accent color. And you can see that it changes the 29 to that blue. And then I also have a number of options to make this even bigger. And so let me just go to EMs here for font size and let's make this 2.0. And you can see that it bumped the 29 way up and then let's go down here and the font weight, I'm gonna make this extra bold because I believe it's a pretty heavy font. Now, when I did this, there are a few bugs sometimes here and there. You can see it didn't change in the editor itself and that's a little confusing sometimes. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the somewhat near future. But once again, if we just preview here, you can see as I scroll down here, the 29 is much, much bolder than the rest of the text here. And so that's really nice and that's looking pretty good so far. So we have the starter and we have $29 per month. It's pretty similar to this, except there's not as much space on this one as in our actual design here. And so this is something I wanna show you. If you right click here and choose inspect in Chrome, I'm. I'm hovered over this advanced heading here. And if I click that, you can see as I hover over this, the, the space that shows up here. So you can see that almost tan bar above. That, sh that means that there's some margin on there. And so if I scroll down here, you can see that it's showing 32 pixels of margin. And so we're gonna remove that and we're gonna come in here. We're once again on the advanced heading. I'm gonna to go to spacing settings here and the margin top, we're just going to put zero and that should negate and override that margin. And so if I come back and preview it, you can see that that got rid of that spacing there. And so that's getting a lot closer and looks a lot closer to what the actual design is. And so the next piece now is gonna be this 20,000 words here. And I'm gonna just do an advanced heading for that as well. So let's come here, let's enter down, and let's go to advanced heading here. We'll once again center this. I'm gonna change it from an H2 to a paragraph. And we're going to come in here and type 20,000 words. And I'm gonna highlight this. We're going to make this font weight bold. So that bolds it. And I might just bump it up a little bit in size to maybe 1.2 here. That's looking pretty good. And then let's just preview it. And once again, now that we previewed it, you can see it is adding that extra space on, on the top of this advanced heading here. And so let's get rid of that again. And I'll come here, we'll go to spacing settings and top and hit zero. Another thing I could have done is I could have just copied this advanced heading and just duplicated it down and changed some things, but I just created a new one. And so now that I removed that space, let's preview it one more time. And you can see that that bumped it up a lot closer to that. And so that's looking pretty good. We have starter and we have $29 a month and 20,000 words showing right here. And the next piece then is this little text here that is just a little description of what it is. So let's build that quick. And for this, since the text color is a little different, I'm just gonna use advanced heading one more time for this here. We'll add an advanced heading, we'll center it, and we'll make this a paragraph. And I'm gonna come here and I'm just going to copy this text and we're gonna throw it in here. And it's actually a little smaller than the rest of the text. You can see it's, it's a little smaller than most of the other stuff. And so I'm gonna just bump that down a little bit. I'm gonna highlight all that. And then we're going to go to M's and I'm gonna make this about 0 0.8. And so that made it a little smaller here. And I'm also going to go to the heading color here and I'm gonna make it just an off gray. So I'm gonna probably choose this here. That's looking pretty good. And let's just preview this and see how this looks. 
And so you can see that that's looking pretty good. We, we have that there, it's, it's centered and it's an off gray, but here's something that you'll already notice. You can see, hey, this looks like really cushioned in here. It, it, has, it has space in between here and there's just a nice space all around this. And so all that is, is just padding on the section itself. And so if we come here, we're on the, this advanced heading right here, but we're gonna click back to the section and now the section itself is chosen. And I'm gonna scroll down here and you can see padding. And I could add the same amount of padding in every one of these boxes, but what I'm gonna do is just click this box and that's going to just add the same amount of padding to the whole thing. We're gonna leave it at pixels and I'm gonna type 40 in here. And what that does now is it gives a spacing between all of the content and builds this out some. And so let's just preview this. And you can see that it gave a nice padding around this and it gave this little description here a lot more breathing room. And so that's looking a lot closer to this. And so I really like how that looks. Uh, we could also take the rounded edges and do that real quick here too. You can see that these sections have rounded edges. So if I come back to the post here and I'm gonna click back to the section. So we're in the section and you can see border radius here. I'm gonna just do about 20 and that gives a nice rounded edge and we can preview that. And you can see that now I have a nice rounded edge with plenty of padding and cushion to make this look really nice. So we're chugging right along here. We already have about a third of this done. We have the first four items here created. And the next thing is this big sign up button. And so let's just go in and we're going to enter down here and we're going to do an advanced button from Cadence Blocks. And in over here on the button settings, I'm gonna open this up here and we're gonna just build this out. I'm gonna leave the button size as medium probably. I, I think theirs is a little big, so I'm just gonna leave it a little smaller here. And let's just start building this out. And so for text color here, I'm gonna have this white. I'm going to make the background type a gradient because if you go back here, you can see that they're using a gradient of colors here. And we're going to choose gradient color one, my first accent color, and gradient color two, my second accent color. And you can see that it starts to get built out here. And one other thing is I'm gonna change the gradient angle. Right now it's going from top to bottom, but theirs goes from left to right. So let's just make this a 90. And you can see now that the dark blue is on the left and the light blue is on the right. So that's looking good here. I'm gonna make the border color white. I think that pops out a little bit. And we're also going to add just maybe a little bit of box shadow here. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna make this zero, this zero. I'm gonna make the blur about 10. And let's do this lighter color here. And I'm gonna take this alpha and make it one. And so it's not gonna be transparent at all. And you can see on the left-hand side here, it adds that nice glow around the button. And then let's just click in the button here and we'll type sign up. And then the last thing we have to do for this is at least add the icon before we get into the hover setting. So I'm gonna go to icon here. There's a little right arrow, which is perfect for this. We're gonna add that there. And let's just preview this right now and just see how this looks. And so this is already looking really good. It has a, a white border. It has that nice glow around it. Right now, it, it's not, it doesn't look correct when we hover over that, and we're gonna work on that next, but we have sign up at least, and it has a gradient, and it's already looking pretty close. So let's go back here. And then if we scroll back up, that was all the normal settings. Let's go to the hover settings, and we can just tweak this a little bit. The hover text color is gonna be white already. For the hover on gradient, I'm just going to do a little, a little trick here. We'll just make the gradient color the second accent color and the second gradient color the first accent color. And so what that's gonna do is it's just going to swap the gradient colors when you hover over it, which will just be a nice little effect. We're gonna set this gradient angle back to 90 and let's just make the hover border color probably the same at white and let's give it a little different box shadow on hover. We're gonna bring this down to zero, this down to zero, and let's make the blur, let's make this really pop out. So let's do a blur of about 30. I'm still gonna use this gray, and we're gonna pump this up to a one again. And so now when you hover over it, it should 
it should pop out quite a bit. And so let's just preview this and see how this looks. So if we scroll down here, if I hover over it, you can't really tell, but the, the light blue on the right side switches to the left side when I hover and the dark blue goes to the right side. And then also you can see that blur really opens up and it makes it light up and pop out. So I like that a lot. Let's just stick with that on the sign up button. And one other thing I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna make this the full width. They have the button be the full width of the container here other than the padding itself. And so let's just, now that we're in the button, let's just scroll back up. And for button width, we're just gonna choose full. And you can see that that opens up. We'll preview it and scroll down and there you have it. You have the sign up button. It's the full width, it has the 40 pixels of padding, which is really nice. It looks good when you hover over it and that's looking great so far. One other thing is you'd obviously wanna put your button link in here and so whatever you want your button in your pricing table to link to, you could put it in here and then you can expand this open and you can choose different options of whether you want it to open in the same window or a new window or you know be a no follow or a sponsored attribute if you're using something like an affiliate link. And so that should be it for the button and the next piece is this starter includes, they have a seven, seven day money back guarantee option above this, but let's just, I'm just gonna take this for simplicity sake and I'm gonna move this down into this section here. And so the next piece we're gonna build is just this starter includes, and that we can, let's just use a regular paragraph block for that. And so let's just insert a something new after this and we'll do starter includes and we'll highlight all that, we'll bold that. And here's another thing, as you can see that starter includes in the editor shows up right underneath the button. But if I go to preview this, you can see that it actually has some spacing in here. So once again, that's another one of those little quirks that you definitely always wanna be choosing to preview your item and make sure it looks the way you want. And so I won't have to add any additional space. I like the way that that looks right now. And so we have that starter includes. And so we just need to build out this icon list here. And that should be really easy using the icon list from Cadence Blocks. So let's go here. Let's do a forward slash and type icon and you can see there's an icon list. And I'm just going to go through now and take all of these options and copy them over to the icon list. And so I'm just finishing up the last two items here. I'm gonna copy this here, we'll add one more. And this last piece and we'll copy this here. And so now I have all the items in there. I, like I said, I did take the seven day money back guarantee and I actually just put it under the starter includes. And so let's just preview this and see how this looks so far. So that's looking really good. We have all the items in there. Uh, I do think we're gonna take the text size and bump it down a little bit. You can see that theirs is a little smaller. So let's come here and let's go to all of the list text styling here. And I'm just gonna choose M's and we'll do 0.8. Let's maybe make that 0 0.9. And you can see that that brought it down some. And we open that back up and that's looking good. That has a pretty small, it's looking pretty clean. And let's see what else we have to change here. So the very first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is, first of all, just change the icon to the appropriate check mark here. And so let's come here and we'll scroll down in the icon list settings here, and we're gonna edit all the icon styles together. And you can see, you can choose the icon here. So let's just open this up. You can search icons. I'm gonna type check, and there's a nice simple check mark right here. So that's looking really great. And then the only other thing that I wanna do is change the icon color to that green color. So I'm gonna get that color here quick. And so I have the icon hex color here. I just got it by using an eyedropper tool and I'm going to paste it in here. And there's that nice green and that is looking really good so far. So we have all the green check marks here and that's, that's looking pretty clean. The only other thing that I'm noticing here is that there is a decent amount of space between the check mark and the text itself. And then the items themselves also have some spacing between them a little more than what I have. And so that's also really easy to tweak here. 
And so let's just scroll up here and you can see that there's a list of vertical spacing and there's list horizontal icon and label spacing. So let's just bump this up to 15. And so that's going to give some space between the icon itself and the items themselves. And then the list vertical spacing is the amount of spacing between the items themselves. So let's bump that up to probably 10. And let's just see how that looks here. So that's looking awesome. So we have some more space between the check mark and the item itself. There's more breathing room between each item. And that's looking really, really close to what this has so far. And so look at this. This is what we have on the front end. That is looking amazing so far. If we just compare it to this, it is looking really, really close to what they have. I mean, there's obviously a few really slight differences, but that's looking awesome. And the very nice thing about Cadence Blocks is now that we have this one built, you can see that the only difference between this one and this one is obviously just different colors. And then they added this plus you get section. And like I said, we're not gonna build this top little tab here, but it's really nice because if we just go back to the editor here, if I just come here and I'm on the section itself, I can take this section and I can copy the styles. And so I can open this up and hit copy styles. And then I can go to this section here. You can once again see I'm on the section here and I can click this and paste the styles. And so that's going to just take everything that I have from the styling at least of the section itself and apply it over here. And then I'm just gonna take all of this content. I'm just gonna copy all this and we're gonna open this up and hit copy. It says it copied seven blocks to the clipboard. We'll come in here and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start with a paragraph and I'm just gonna control V and paste here. And boom, I have everything from this first column directly in the second column. And if I preview this, it should look the exact same. And yep, here you go. So we have two of the exact same thing here. So now the only thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add this plus you get section really quick and that should be super simple. So I'm just gonna take this section right here. We're gonna, I'm gonna go here and copy this and we're going to insert a block after the icon list and we're gonna paste that and we're just gonna change this text to say plus you get and preview that and we'll scroll down here and you can see it says plus you get and that looks that looks identical to that. And then we're just gonna add another really quick icon list and add these two additional options here. And so I'm actually just going to take this and we're actually just going to duplicate it. So we're gonna build a second one. I'm gonna click this down arrow to move it down and that puts it below here. And then let's just X out of all of these except two and we'll just add workspace documents. And then the last one was long form assistant. So I'll copy that over here and we'll preview that. And boom, you have the entire thing changed. I, I did notice that I do need to change this to pro and I need to change this here and this little description. So let's do that quick and we'll scroll up and this is pro. We need to change this to $99 a month. We need to change this to unlimited words. And then this little section is a little different. It has a slightly different description. And so let's just copy that over and let's preview this quick and see how that looks. So we have starter and pro, we have 29 and 99. We have 20,000 words and unlimited words and then slightly different descriptions here. And that looks basically identical. Starter Pro, 29.99, 20,000 unlimited words and little descriptions. And then we also added the plus you get. So that is looking amazing so far. And the only thing now that we're gonna change is we just have to change the background color to be a lighter color. Now, since I'm on a light background here, I might actually have the right side here be my my dark color for the section because that gives more contrast and people's eyes will go to it. So I might actually just change this left hand column here to be the light one. And so let's just go back to the left hand here. We'll click section here, or once again, you can click in here and you can see these are all the things that make up this. And I'm just gonna go to this first section here. And so I'm on the section and I'm gonna actually just change this background color back to white for this. Now, don't fret, we'll go come down here and we'll go to the text 
color settings here. And I'm gonna just change this from white to, let's just do this gray here. And we will change the description here to be a little darker because that was lighter and so that's looking good. And then back on the section itself here, we are gonna just add a border and so I'm gonna just click this button to, so that it's a border all the way around. We're gonna make it two pixels and we're gonna change the border color to this dark color. And so now you can see that adds a nice border and it, it makes it stand out more. And so let's just preview that quick. And so that looks really good. So now we have a light section here that is the starter plan at $29 a month. And then you have this dark section here, which adds a great contrast to the light background. And that really catches people's eyes. And one other little tweak I'm gonna make here is they do have this little section here on top, but I do like that the left-hand side is actually, it looks a little bit lower than the right-hand side. And so we can easily do that by just adding about 40 pixels of margin to the top of this left-hand side here. And so let's come back here. Let's go to this guy, we're on the section and we're gonna scroll down and go to the margin here. And you can see that the margin top, it's on pixels. I'm just gonna type 40 here. And you can see that that bumped it down. And so now this is a little lower than the right hand side. Let's preview that. And here you go, that looks absolutely fantastic. So we have the starter on the left hand side, it has the light background, it's bumped down a little bit. And the right hand side really draws your attention to the pro plan. It has the sign up button and all that. And it's a little longer and it has the additional options that you get, including all of the different tweaks for the various features that you get on top of the starter plan. One last thing I wanna show you here is how this looks on mobile. And so I'm back here on the row layout itself. I'm on the top level row, the container block itself. And I already have the two columns over here, but you can see that it puts that column gutter of about 30 pixels. And so that's what you see the spacing in between these two, which is really nice. But then if you switch over to mobile here, you can see that it stacks it on top of each other, which is what we want. We definitely don't want them side by side on mobile. And so we want them stacked on each other. And we have the standard 30 pixels for a vertical gutter to separate the two and so let's just see this on the preview here so if we go to the preview and one way that you can test this in chrome that i like using for a better experience of seeing what it looks like on mobile is to press f12 which will bring up your chrome dev tools and then you can actually click this button right here which is the toggle device toolbar and if i choose that there's an option here for a number of different devices that you could look at it on for different resolutions. And so this is just on the Moto G4. We could look at this on an iPad if we want, and you can see that it's side by side still at that resolution. But if we go here to the Moto G4, this is what it should look like on mobile. And so it starts with the starter on the top, which is exactly what we want. And because we used the correct spacing and, and padding and things like that, and we weren't overzealous with our padding, which can definitely get you in trouble here, it looks fantastic here. And you'll scroll down and then there's that little bit of space between these two, which is what I was talking about. And then here's that big pro plan with a darker background and it too looks great with all the padding. And so now you know it's gonna look great on desktop, tablet and mobile, which is awesome. And that's just another perk that I love about using Cadence Blocks. And so there you have it. This is the Conversion AI pricing table. And here's the pricing table that we built that's all linked to the Cadence theme global colors in your theme. It looks 95% identical and it was very, very easy to create using Cadence Blocks. It's, this is amazing because you can build just beautiful sections and design different templates like this all within Cadence Blocks and your page speed is going to be through the roof. It's gonna be so fast and I'm using system fonts here, like I said. And so there are no additional Google fonts being loaded on the website and I have the option to use all these different font weights and things to really build out different sections and, and make it look nicer no matter what I want with the design. And so there you have it, a fully fledged pricing table built directly in Gutenberg and Cadence Blocks. We use the free Cadence theme and free Cadence Blocks and both your users and Google are gonna love you because your page is gonna load extremely fast. 
If you guys like this video and you want more Cadence Blocks tutorials and just more speed optimization tips in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit a thumbs up if you like this video and ring that bell and I'll see you guys in the next video.